When it comes to liquor licenses, Boston's a city of two glasses, one's overflowing in areas with complaints about too many bars and restaurants or lost spaces for resident parking. In other neighborhoods, the glass is less than half full with a lack of affordable licenses, stifling potential growth in jobs and cultural vitality. Our guest has been following the story in her investigative reporting for Dig Boston. We'd like to welcome Haley Hamilton. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, yeah, Haley. Thanks for having me. First of all, t talk about why we have these two kinds of realms in the city when it comes to licenses, because you've got one area of the city where I guess uh, if, if you buy a very pricey license, mm -hmm. You can, uh, you can make money still. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if we go way back to when we had the cap in place, after, well, I guess when we met that cap, you had a monopoly. You know, markets closed. There, the only way to get a license would be to buy one. And because it was going to be a seller's market, you could charge a lot for those. Money stays with money. So if you had someone in a more affluent neighborhood who wanted to purchase a license, they were able to do so. Where we have places that are traditionally less wealthy, places like Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan, the funds just weren't there for it. And, and a lot of these places with the pricey licenses, they're high volume, they're probably more about liquor than food. I'd say so, yeah. The price isn't, the license price doesn't depend on the volume though, it's just going to be what they're able to serve. But yeah, they're definitely making their money back. And we have this other tier of licenses, and talk about why we had this tier, uh, because this is something that Ayanna Presley, the city councilor, mm -hmm. worked on, and she's trying to help a lot of the, the other parts of the city. Mm -hmm. So, there, okay, there's two, there's two main tiers of licenses. One's all liquor, other one is um, malts and wines. So, full liquor, you can do all your vodkas, all your rums, all your hard liquor, uh, the malts and wines, call it beer, wine, and cordials a lot of the time. Beer and wine, totally fine. The only hard alcohol you can sell has to have a certain percentage of sugar. And those are traditionally less expensive. Um, the ones that Ayanna Presley helped release, there's 25 per year for three years. 10 of them are all alcohol. Ten, and 10 are all alcohol, unrestricted. The remaining 10 all alcohol and the five beer and wine licenses are restricted to particular neighborhoods. So that's the breakdown there. Why are neighborhoods that don't have many of these um, in need of, of more? Uh, because what's the economic reason or, or the quality of life reason? Sure, it's, um, it's definitely not about the booths. Um, it's about being able to have a place to go and celebrate, being able to have a place where you can bring people together. Um, it's a good meal. It's jobs. It's a reason for people to keep their money in the neighborhood instead of leaving, you know, or going out right by their office after work. You want to go home and then bring people to the neighborhood. It's about not going out on weekends. It's about being able to walk down the street. Well, the way things are right now, uh, there will be a chance over the next year for some more of these licenses. Uh, but what happens after this year? What happens after this year? We're back to square one. Well, why, now, this is where it gets interesting, because wh why is that going to be the case? I know the mayor has been trying to change the scenario here, but I guess it's not working out. No, so recently um, there was legislation passed. They passed the governor's municipal act on budget something. It's a big omnibus bill. And um, part of that is to allow the municipalities to have control over how many liquor licenses can be within their borders, mm -hmm. except for Boston. The Senate voted and amended that to include the city of Boston, but when everything got voted on, what was passed excluded Boston. Now, uh, this is where we get into the real ancient history. Of why is it that Boston's treated differently? Because if, if in Somerville people want to allow more licenses, then they, they take their political risks and they, they just do it. Absolutely. Um, we can go way back to the Brahmins. It was right after Prohibition, so 1933, we decided if, okay, liquor can be served in the state and the country again, but Boston, you can only have this many places. Boston's a city not controlled by Brahmins. Uh, uh, now, in this case, uh, the mayor has been meeting some resistance from some legislators. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I read about them, uh, I noticed that they represent districts where there seem to be a lot of licenses and a lot of complaints. So um, uh, they're saying, hey, this is local control, too. Yeah, I think it's interesting. Those are really good points, and I can understand certain neighborhoods, certain districts not wanting any more licenses. Um, I live in Alston. I get that. We don't really need another bar. Um, 
But it doesn't mean that because more licenses would be made available or because the city would have the control over the number that everyone who applied would just get one. There's still a lot of public need that has to be met. There are definitely different levels. You go through your neighborhood board, city councilors, state representatives, everyone can come and speak for or against someone getting a license at the hearing. So just because Boston would be able to say, we're not out, we have more available, doesn't mean if somebody applied, they would automatically get one. And, and of course, I guess the same dynamic would probably take place because it, let's say even if uh, the mayor appointed the board and it was a Boston board, they could decide how many licenses. Uh, I mean, you'd still have hearings, you'd have city councilors, state reps coming in, and, and they could put pressure. Exactly. So what happens now is a lot of times people will apply, they'll get all their ducks in a row, they'll have their business plan, they'll garner community support, they'll notify a butters, it's a big process. They will be approved by everyone, they are approved by the city, it goes to the state, and the state says, whoops, sorry, you don't have any. So a lot of the time, it's a, a business that the neighborhood and the city has deemed would benefit the public, and it's, it's not that they can't do it, it's that we just don't have a license to give you because of the cap. Now, one thing that I'm sure people thought about uh, uh, when they uh, expand, expanded access to affordable mm -hmm. licenses is that you don't want to have somebody buying an affordable license in let's say Mattapan and eventually flipping it and the license ends up in one of those neighborhoods that are mm -hmm. that, that are over uh, that are over licensed so mm -hmm. uh, isn't something already in place to keep that from happening yes so the restricted licenses cannot be transferred if say someone in Mattapan obtains a license opens a bar they shut in a year people have no more use for the license, it has to be returned to the city. Okay, so uh, we should mention that you've got this uh, latest update in Dig Boston, so people can check that out? Yes, they can.